You know, one of the things we love most about Naruto is that he's kind of a dope. At first, he never seemed to get anything right. He was just plain unintelligent. Well, he had intelligence in his own way, but definitely outside of conventional smarts. He really raised himself. He seemed to be missing that gene. That gene would have been passed down by both Minato and Kushina. Minato's strength and prodigious nature and Kushina's smarts. In the end, he was left with whatever wasn't prodigious. Well, I mean, he caught up, but that was through luck and a little Rock Lee-style hard work. Rock Lee himself lacks a prodigious nature and merely grows due to his desire to be as strong as someone like Neji. So here I sit and wonder what would have happened if Naruto's genes were a little shaken up. What if he had been born a prodigy? Someone with incredible potential that was easily fulfilled due to his natural abilities and smarts. That's what I want to find out today. Welcome to the Amagi. Before we begin, we publish a new video every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. Also, be sure to check and see if you're still subscribed. YouTube lately has been unsubscribing people for whatever reason, and we just want to make sure that you don't miss out on any more of our videos. The Amagi's reach stretches beyond just this channel, so if you're a fan of us, please consider subscribing to our other channels and following us on all of our social media. Help us reach our goal of passing 100,000 followers on all of our accounts by the end of the year. If you want to show some support for the channel while also rocking some stylish threads, be sure to head on over to our website and order some today. We've got t-shirts, sweatshirts, long sleeves, hoodies, and more, all with some great Amagi graphic design right on there to show all of your friends how much you love anime. And us, of course. Our story starts where any story does, at the beginning. October 10th the day Kushina gives birth, in a secret location undisclosed to the public, but still somehow found by Tobi, she lays on a slab. By her side was Biwako Sarutobi, the wife of the third Hokage and a healing specialist. All the while, Minato was there, but his hands were not holding hers. His hands were pressed to the seal on her stomach. As sweet as this moment was, there was no time to let their guard down. Kurama was a powerful beast, and the seal was never weaker for a woman than when giving birth. Minato, having been taught sealing techniques by his wife alongside the various seals he learned over his impressive career, would stand there and force the seal closed as she gave birth. Despite all of these circumstances surrounding them, they successfully gave birth to a baby boy. One who had inherited his father's face, but his mother's hair. Kushina beckoned to have her child in her arms, but before the chance came, Toby appeared out of the blue and holds the fresh little munchkin hostage, threatening to kill it if they didn't hand over Kushina. Minato managed to save Naruto, but in the process lost Kushina. He hurried back to their home, keeping the infant safe as he then rushed off to rescue her. To this, he was successful. However, for all of his wondrous speed, Minato was too slow and failed to stop Toby from removing the tailed beast from her. He returned her to their home where he laid her beside their child to rest while he went to get the Ninetales. It rampaged through the streets, trampling people and buildings alike. But Minato, gleaming like the yellow sunrise, appears when the village needs him most. And before the beast can launch its tailed beast ball, he uses his flying Raijin technique to drag the tailed beast to another location. Having defeated Tobi, he severed the connection between him and the tailed beast, setting Kurama free. Kushina, knowing that she was dead, begged Minato to seal it into her to allow her to drag it to the grave with her. Instead, Minato decided to seal it into Naruto. Kushina cried out, asking him why he would curse their child to live with such a hateful beast, but Minato was resolute. He knew that a great calamity might come if the tailed beast was killed. It could cause an imbalance not only in the balance of power between beasts, but also in nations, which could lead to another world war. Besides this, though, he knew his son could handle it. After all, not only was he an Uzumaki, as his red hair dictated, he was a Namakaze, just like his old man. And every ounce of Minato's potential, he would squeeze into his son through a powerful wish as he sealed the beast within the infant. Be strong, my son. Protect the village. With that, the beast was sealed into Naruto, and both Minato and Kushina were dead. Once the barrier was down, Naruto would be found by Hiruzen, who would make sure that the child was taken care of. And so, for years, the child grew, criticized and hated three ways to Sunday by the people around him who should be grateful for him. But then again, who could blame them? 
The cycle of hatred was real, and Naruto was but a single cog in that machine, bearing the very thing they despised until they could no longer tell the difference between Kurama and Naruto. He was in, in his own special way, and by special I mean total failure of a way, attempted to protect the child from such ostracization, but in the end, all that came about was him being ignored by those he needed most. And so he sought attention by vandalizing the place. He certainly got what he wanted by doing that. Eventually, he would enroll in the academy to become a shinobi, where he would be in the same class as Sasuke Uchiha, who would be astounded. Naruto got straight A's and perfect scores almost 9 times out of 10. Naruto was the head of his class, and just seemed to soak up any information presented to him like a sponge. He would eventually go on to pass the exams with flying colors, becoming a genin of his very own. It's then that Mizuki plans to use him for his own gain. He tells Naruto that there's a scroll that possesses incredible jutsu for him to learn if he will get it. He tells him that he's been chosen to test just how good the defenses of the Hokage's residents are, and that all he needs to do is get the scroll. Naruto does so with incredible ease and even begins to wonder what all this is about. He looks into the scroll and sees all of the wondrous jutsu that are in there, but he seems to stop upon learning of Tobirama Senju's techniques. These were the ones he liked the most. However, before he could continue, Iruka shows up and demands that he hand over the scroll. Mizuki, however, attacks Iruka. This causes a conflict between the two, one that Iruka is outmatched in. After realizing that Iruka actually cared for him, Naruto would burst into tears and resolve in himself not to let Mizuki harm him any further. Using the multi-shadow clone jutsu, Naruto would absolutely pummel Mizuki before handing the scroll back to Iruka and personally apologizing to the shinobi who would come to take it. Iruka vouches for him and Naruto is let off the hook. He's then allowed to join a shinobi team. He's assigned to team 7, which possesses Sakura Harano, a fact that makes Naruto very happy, and Sasuke Uchiha, which makes Naruto very unhappy. Naruto, together with Sasuke and Sakura, would greet their new sensei and proceed to be tested by the mysterious Kakashi. The test was simple, get the bells from me before lunch. This test was simple enough. After probing Kakashi a bit, Naruto seems to estimate where Kakashi's upper limits might be, and then he begins to prep for the fact that it's likely far higher. Naruto knows to never underestimate his enemy, and so he begins to use shadow clones, and use the various techniques he's learned to get the upper hand. But even then, his suspicions were proven correct, and Kakashi easily dodges all of it. So Naruto begins to consider asking Sasuke and Sakura for help. Sakura is open to it as she herself has a brain. Sasuke also has a brain but is too prideful to accept it. So he continues on his own for a while until it's proven that he can't do it by himself in the most shameful of ways. And so he relents and decides to do things Naruto's way. They begin a three-way pincer attack which would have Naruto come from the east, Sasuke from the west, and Sakura from above. However, this is all just a triple feint, as the first Naruto is a shadow clone, and the real Naruto will be coming up from the ground where the bells are closest. They begin to pull off the plot, and it seems to go by swimmingly. However, Kakashi senses the movement of the ground below and knows what it means. But before he jumps, he realizes that this is perfect teamwork, and instead lets Naruto take the bells. Naruto and team celebrate, but then reach the dilemma of who will have to return to the academy. Kakashi breaks it to them that nobody will and that this was all just a test of teamwork, which they soundly passed. He then welcomes them onto the team and they set off to do shinobi work, which to Naruto's surprise is just remedial work. Nothing more than walking dogs and saving cats from trees. No, this will not stand. Naruto asks for something better, something more exciting, and so the Hokage obliges. They set off with Tazuna to the Land of Waves, where they would encounter the Demon Bros, but, you know, Naruto just obliterates them the moment they appear. And beyond that, they encounter Zabuza, who would capture Kakashi, but with Sasuke's help, Naruto manages to trick him using a Demon Wind Shuriken, utilizing their faint technique once more to take Zabuza off guard. They manage to free Kakashi, and when it becomes obvious that he can't win, Zabuza is incapacitated by Haku. They would continue on to Tazuna's house, where they're instructed by Kakashi to work on their chakra control via walking on vertical surfaces. He asks them to climb a tree, and at first, Naruto, much like Sasuke, fails. However, he picks it up quickly and ends up being the second person to learn it, leaving Sasuke in third place. Sasuke is beginning to resent Naruto's know-it-all nature and his ability to learn and do anything and everything. They would go to the bridge to oversee its construction, and because Naruto wasn't up all hours of the night to train, he is awake to help. Zabuza and Haku appear. 
Sasuke and Naruto are trapped in the demonic mirroring ice crystals technique. Together, they're overwhelmed by the Senbon, however, Naruto has a trick up his sleeve. After he had been told by Mizuki exactly the reason why everyone hated him, he began to do a little soul searching, and he just so happened to find that demon fox in there that he had been told about. He began to harness that energy, going into a very rough form of the version 1 cloak, just a little above the initial Jinchuriki state. With its power, he shatters the mirrors and overpowers Haku, putting him on the ground as quickly as possible. Naruto still doesn't know what will happen the more he uses this power, and so he doesn't want to use it too much and put everyone at risk. He holds Haku down and Kakashi kills Zabuza. Haku is destroyed by this, but what's even worse is when Gato and his men arrive. Gato holds Tsunami and Inari hostage, while his men abuse the body of Zabuza. This offends both Naruto and Haku. Haku will have his revenge. He goes about killing Gato's men, and while Gato is distracted by that, Naruto swoops in and frees Tsunami and Inari, helping them escape. Haku would manage to kill Gato's men and later Gato himself. After this, and after a short talk about their reasonings and why they believed what they did, Naruto would offer to bring Haku back to Konoha with him. However, Haku declines and goes on his way. The bridge is then called the Great Naruto Bridge for the incredible feats he did while on it. This further causes Sasuke to resent Naruto, as he just seems to be getting stronger and stronger, leaving him in the dust. Eventually, the time of the Chunin exams rolls around. And Naruto, who was already growing bored of the return to seemingly meaningless work, is just itching to be a part of it. Considering the nature of his group, Kakashi decides that maybe it is best to allow them to do it. After all, they had more than proven themselves during the mission to the Land of Waves, and so they're offered the choice to, which they all decide upon together. They go to enter the Chunin exams, but are stopped by Rock Lee. Rumors abound about the red-hot flash of the leaf and his exploits. Lee just has to do it. So the two fight, but Lee seems to be quick. He's utilizing his eight gates technique, and so Naruto calls upon some of Kurama's power to boost his own speed and power, which allows him to move at the same speeds, if not faster than Lee. This results in a pretty equal tie until Gai Sensei shows up to stop it. Lee would be punished for what he had been doing, and Naruto and the rest of Team 7, now completely weirded out by the strange relationship between Gai and Lee, decide to skip out on them and continue to the Chunin exams registry. Naruto and the rest of Team 7 begin with the first part of the exam, the written test. Naruto, actually like Sakura, manages to answer many of the questions correctly, but honestly none of that really matters, as the only question worth taking is the last one, and that one is automatically correct if you merely choose to answer it. And spoilers, Naruto chooses to answer it. Because not only is he an egghead and a prodigy, he's also gutsy. Moving on to the second exam, he is in the forest of death with his team, and guess what? He was smart enough to go potty before he began the second exam. However, all of this is about moot when they find Orochimaru who still incapacitates them both. Sasuke he brands with a curse mark, and Naruto he adds the five element seal to. This puts them both under for a while. From here, most of the forest of death happens the same. Sasuke and Naruto are out, Sakura guards them until they wake up, Sasuke breaks that guy's arms, and they get the scroll and go to the tower at the center of the map. It's there that they go through the third part of the Chunin exams, the exhibition matches, but uh oh, there are too many participants, so they gotta cull them using the preliminaries. And wouldn't you know it, Sakura gets culled. So does Ino. I guess both were equal levels of pathetic. Sasuke faces off against Yoroi, but due to the fact that he's been branded by Orochimaru's curse mark, if he attempts to use his chakra, he loses control. It has already been stated that if he loses control, he's automatically out of the exams, and so he needs to do this with just taijutsu. After having watched Lee's moves against Naruto, Sasuke copies some of those taijutsu skills and forms the lion combo, which he uses to defeat Yoroi. He then gets his seal, well, sealed by Kakashi to keep it from waking up. Naruto would then proceed to face off against Kiba, where he soundly beats him in a way likely not involving flatulence. Funny as it was, Naruto here doesn't need such petty moves, he's a prodigy. They then get a month off to rest and train for the next half of the third round. Naruto is originally training under Ebisu, but upon finding Jiraiya peeking into the women's bathhouse and then displaying his sexy jutsu for him, proving that both are just as perverted as the other, they strike up a mentor-student bond, with Naruto training under the Toad Sage to learn more techniques. Jiraiya would remove the five element seal, which Naruto mentions right off the bat, because he's smarter in this world, and begins to train with Jiraiya, who manages to help him perfect his version 1 chakra cloak, and even makes slight headway into the version 2 cloak, but only in its initial stages, and reminds him that it must only be used in case of emergencies. 
He further allows Naruto to explore his own skills, and Naruto puts to good use the information he had read in the Scroll of Seals. Returning to the Leaf, the training has made a notable difference in his overall skill level, and just the way Naruto carries himself tells people that he has grown stronger. When the match between him and Neji begins, Neji grossly underestimates him and overestimates his own absolute defenses. However, having witnessed the fight between Neji and Hinata, Naruto is ready. He begins to throw kunai at Neji, probing his defenses, but Neji dodges them and blocks. Naruto continues peppering him with them, and Neji begins to taunt him, stating that Naruto is too scared to face him head on. This doesn't phase Naruto though, who continues to attack the same way. Eventually, he begins to use his shadow clones to get close, which at first overwhelms Neji, but is adapted to through the use of the 8 trigrams palm rotation. Getting into a groove, Neji eliminates any threat coming in with relative ease. However, things begin to take a step up when Naruto reveals the kunai that he presses before him at Neji's direction. A custom-made three-pronged kunai with a wooden handle and a strange inscription on it. He begins to bounce around, as do his clones, and eventually they get Neji off kilter. Having discovered the singular chink in this absolute defense, Naruto runs in with the speed granted to him with his version 1 cloak and strikes him from behind, knocking him into the wall and defeating Neji. Naruto's victory is so sound that he is surely set to become a Chunin whether he wins or not, but the chances of him losing are low. Sasuke finds that this battle, despite being against Gara, is heavily underhyped by the crowd, who begin to wonder how his battle against Gara could be any better than Naruto's against Neji. Even still, Sasuke manages to wound Gara, which causes a full mental breakdown of our poor sand demon. It's around this time that the Konoha crush happens. Kabuto puts everyone under, and the Hokage's viewing box explodes out with the force of the attack. Hiruzen faces off against Orochimaru, but loses. But as his last spit in Orochimaru's eyes, he seals Orochimaru's arms through the use of the Reaper Death Seal. Meanwhile, Naruto is awakened by Sakura, who tells him to go help Sasuke. And help Sasuke he does. Appearing there with Gamabunta, he flat out stomps all over Gara in a way that is almost offensive to Sasuke. Gara is dealt with and Orochimaru is defeated, but Hiruzen is dead. They need a new leader. And so, after the funeral of Hiruzen, Jiraiya and Naruto are sent out after Tsunade, the person chosen to replace Hiruzen as the fifth Okage. However, she wants nothing to do with it and decides against it. Secretly, she plans to kill Orochimaru, likely sacrificing her own life to do so. She insults the position of Hokage, which heavily offends Naruto, who hopes to have that position one day. And so, Naruto proceeds to face off against her after her invitation. He displays incredible power to which she is impressed. Jiraiya states that he has every ounce of potential that Minato had, and that he plans to teach him the Rasengan. That is, if Naruto doesn't flat out learn it himself beforehand. Tsunade acknowledges Naruto's power, but it doesn't dissuade her from her path. She proceeds to prepare for her confrontation with Orochimaru, which Naruto and Jiraiya quickly discover. They rush off to help her. A large battle begins between Naruto, Tsunade, and Jiraiya against Kabuto and Orochimaru. It's during this battle that Naruto perfects the Rasengan and manages to defeat Kabuto. Orochimaru would also be driven off. Tsunade had failed to complete her mission, but she was surprised by the power Naruto had displayed. She gives him the first Hokage's necklace, which she wears around her neck as a sign of her faith that he will one day become Hokage. She then decides to hold that position for him until he eventually grows strong enough for it. They return triumphantly with their new Hokage, but things are not all sunshine and rainbows. Sasuke is brooding over his loss to Itachi, as well as how far Naruto had come. It's then that the Sound 4 come and further humiliate him, just to show him what true power tastes like. They offer him the chance to come with them. He takes time to decide whether he would, weighing it out, and decides that the best course of action is to train with Orochimaru. He meets up with the Sound 4, who proceed to put him into a jar and give him the proper medicine required to allow him to awaken his curse mark's second stage. They leave with Sasuke, but little do they know that a team of shinobi, including Naruto, is on its way to stop them. They're caught off guard by Naruto and co, which leads to a large battle. In the end, Sasuke awakens with his new power and flees. But before Naruto can give chase, he's stopped by Kimimaro, who plans to give Sasuke just enough time to escape. This holds Naruto back, but eventually Gara and Rock Lee appear to help out, and this gives Naruto the time he needs to escape the battle and chase Sasuke down. Naruto manages to catch up with him and demands that he return to the village with them. Sasuke refuses, and they begin to battle. Sasuke using his second stage curse mark, and Naruto in his version 1. They battle on near even ground, but Naruto gets the edge when he uses his version 2 cloak. As they battle, Naruto begins to pull ahead. However, he comes up with an idea. Suddenly, he tags the back of Sasuke's shirt. 
He then feigns defeat and lets Sasuke escape. It's a risky move, but if done correctly will allow them to capture not only Sasuke but Orochimaru as well. Once Sasuke was gone, Naruto gets up and makes his way back. He then tells Kakashi about it and they select the top tier of the top tier. The Anbu even join in. Naruto then uses the flying Raijin technique to summon them to Sasuke's location where they eliminate Orochimaru on the spot and retake Sasuke. Sasuke is then brought back to the village where he'd be held under arrest for a while until they could prove that he was no danger. He would be stripped of his position as a shinobi until he can earn their trust again. Naruto laments this but knows that it's better than letting Sasuke get used. Naruto then decides to take this moment to prepare for the eventual time that he will become the Hokage, and so he proceeds to go off training with Jiraiya. While gone, the Akatsuki begin to move, and Sasuke himself continues to train his rear off for the day that he'll kill Itachi. After all, he doesn't need to be a shinobi to accomplish his dreams, just strong. After about two and a half years, Naruto returns to Konoha where he's reunited with Sakura and Kakashi. He's sent along with them on a mission to the Hidden Sand, where he is to rescue Gara, who's been taken hostage by the Akatsuki. After Sakura heals Konkuro, they learn of the location of the Akatsuki's secret hideout. With the help of Gai's team, they manage to find this, but are held back by decoys of Itachi and Kisame. With quick speed and the power of not only his version 2 cloak, but also his Ninetales chakra mode, Naruto obliterates these decoys and gets there before they can take all of the one tail out of Gara, and manages to save his life, killing Sasori on his own, and nearly killing Daedara as well. Naruto would have killed Daedara if there hadn't been a clay clone serving as a distraction. Sakura heals Gara, and they triumphantly return to Sunagakure with the Kazakage. Naruto and Sakura then return to Konoha, where Tsunade begins to declare the Akatsuki a true threat, and decides to begin the Akatsuki suppression mission. To that end, many shinobi, including Asuma Saratobi, are sent out to their eventual deaths in an attempt to stop the Akatsuki. Naruto at this time is training to learn a new technique, which he is more than ready to display by the time that Hidan and Kakuzu are encountered. Once they are, Naruto appears there and seamlessly skunks both of them. After this, two things happen. One, Jiraiya is sent to Amegakure to what would later be his death, and two, Sasuke gets an invitation from Itachi via Crow clone to come to the Uchiha hideout for their final battle. Sasuke worries that he isn't ready for it, but goes anyway. While there, he manages to face off against Itachi on close grounds, but Itachi has him outclassed in many ways, and in the end, Itachi goes overboard and defeats Sasuke. Itachi would then just sit down next to his brother, too tired to keep up the charade, and tells him plainly that he loves him and has always loved him, and that he's sorry that he had to lie for so long. He then dies, leaving Sasuke quite confused. A confusion that Tobi clears up for him. Realizing that his brother was never a traitor and that it was really Konoha, Sasuke awakens the Mongekyo Sharingan and proceeds to plot the destruction of the leaf. During this time, Naruto is told about what happened to Jiraiya and that he has been killed. He helps decode what Jiraiya was trying to say. Naruto takes his time to lament his mentor until Pain attacks the village. However, before any true lasting damage could be done, Naruto puts an end to the Six Paths with his Nine Tails Chakra Mode, because, I mean, do you really expect any of the Six Paths, even if they gang up on him, to be able to beat Naruto in Nine Tails Chakra Mode? Hell no. Naruto solos, but beyond that, his conversation and conversion of Nagato back to the side of good remains the same, as Nagato begins to believe what Naruto is telling him and decides to forego the way of evil, and uses the outer path technique, Samsara of Heavenly Life, to revive any dead in the village. From here, the Akatsuki are considered a national threat, and a summit is called between the five Kage, to which Tsunade goes. While there, Sasuke attempts to attack the summit, but he's all by himself and in a weaker state, so he dies. Straight and to the point, even with the Mangyakyo Sharingan, A kills him. War is still declared on the world, however, and because of that, they attempt to send Naruto away for training, but he already has Ninetales Chakra Mode, so he senses it all anyway, and there's no stopping him. He joins in, and effortlessly defeats the Ido Tensei of Pain, as well as Itachi. They would eventually need to find and defeat Kabuto, the issue with this is that without the Izanami, it's unknown if Kabuto will ever stop, and so if it comes down to it, they might kill him. And if they do, they will need to find and seal every Ido Tensei. This slows things down quite a bit. However, they still make their way to the battlefield, where Naruto and the others face off against Madara and Obito. They manage to defeat Obito at first through Kakashi's Mangekyo Sharingan, but then he absorbs the Tentails, which is a taller order. At this point in time, Naruto has no Sage Mode techniques because he was already so strong, they were like, why teach him a lesser technique that he doesn't need? 
This doesn't mean he still can't win, as Sage Energy is only used to bypass the Truth Seeking Balls, which could still be done anyway as shown in Guy's battle with Madara. Though it is unknown if Naruto can beat Tobi as is. He's a prodigy, but this guy is on divine levels. So what is a mangaka to do at this point? We pull an Akira Toriyama and pull a new transformation right out of our rears. Naruto actually gets beaten by Tentails Jinchuriki Obito, but he doesn't die. He has a near-death experience, but he revives as the six-path sage mode Naruto, having taken the power of Hagodomo for himself. So now, not only does he get a power boost, but he also gains sage power, which allows him to bypass truth-seeking balls. He absolutely wipes the floor with Obito and removes the Tentails from him. After a heartfelt Takno Jutsu moment, he convinces Obito that what he did was wrong, and so Obito prepares to pull a Nagato and use the Samsara of Heavenly Life technique to revive anyone who died in the fourth Shinobi World War. But Madara was like, nope, I'm not getting gypped for a second time, and so he has Black Zetsu aim the technique at him and revive him only. So now we reach two possibilities. We could spring for a somewhat sad ending and have Madara take the Ten Tails and then be replaced by Kaguya who can't be beaten without Sasuke's help, or we acknowledge the fact that Naruto could just blitz Madara now, which shouldn't be too hard to do considering his current power as well as the fact that Madara mistakenly done gone and made himself alive now, which means that he can be killed again. So at this point I would say that Naruto can blitz and kill Madara. If this is done, it stops Kaguya from incarnating through him, and it also ends the threat of the infinite Tsukiyomi. It also grants Konoha, the only village to possess a Rinnegan, the ability to study the ghetto statue. I'm certain Danzo would like to keep it together, but then again, that would just cause the fifth Shinobi World War, so they likely strip it of all of its energy. Well, almost. To be frank with you, Danzo may have them compromise, which leads to the Hidden Leaf leaving a small portion of each tailed beast within the statue, allowing it to remain alive. Obito would be able to hold off Zetsu long enough for someone to remove the Rinnegan from his eye. Zetsu would then attempt to flee and is either killed on the spot or is allowed to escape, both of which make likely no difference at this point. The war ends and Konoha begins experimenting with the tree, including the Zetsu and everything in regards to it. After this, Hinata would very likely be kidnapped by Toneri Otsutsuki, but I mean, come on, do you think Naruto being stronger changes anything whatsoever? No. Naruto not only beats Toneri, but he beats him harder than before. He rescues Hinata and the two marry and give birth to Boruto and Himawari. Naruto is then handed down the title of Hokage by Tsunade who was holding it for him just as promised. Naruto is finally named the 6th Hokage and his mug is then added to the Mount Leafmore. But the end of troubles does not come yet, as Naruto must also contend with new threats like Momoshiki and Kinshiki Otsutsuki. Naruto gets captured by Momoshiki and Kinshiki but is able to escape through use of his flying Raijin technique, which they had not accounted for. Realizing that this is going to take more than he has, he absorbs the Tentails in defense of Konoha and then prepares for their return. When they do return, due to having the Tentails inside of him, Naruto absolutely smashes them, and he's plenty ready for when Ishiki appears. He could just use Baryon mode to defeat Ishiki, but why do that when you can just beat him with the Tentails? And do you think Code is going to be that much of a threat? Nah. The bigger issue here is whether Boruto will still almost die to stop Momoshiki. I still think he would. Whether it be during the battle against Code or not, they likely would still do it and stop Momoshiki from fully resurrecting. At least, that's what I think. So what do you think? I sort of think that this is one of the few occasions in which Naruto manages to get a good ending without Sasuke's presence. While it does seem strange, plenty of events just so happened to line up perfectly for Naruto in such a way that it became possible. The only thing required was the obliteration of Madara before he could take on the Ten Tails. However, there is a distinct possibility. Now, remember when I said that Black Zetsu's escape wouldn't mean anything? I was wrong. In fact, the future of the Naruto universe hangs on it. Naruto absorbed the Ten Tails, which means if Zetsu is still around and manages to get a hold of Naruto while he's using it to defeat Momoshiki and Kinshiki, he could easily awaken Kaguya, which could lead to a very bad future, in which everyone is Ten Tails fodder and Zetsu slaves. So Zetsu's escape very much is important. If he escapes, bad future. If he's killed, as even he admitted was a distinct possibility, the future is good. So just take your pick and whichever future you want. Me, I prefer the good one. Anyway, leave a message in the comments below to let us know what you thought of the video. Be sure to give a thumbs up and a subscription if you haven't done so yet. Also, be sure to click that bell to get notified when new content like this drops. Peace.